Paddy Cripps, Nate Fife. You wouldn't be upset if you had pick two in a two-person draft. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, Nate Fife is, for me, one of the most complete athletes, complete footballers, and doing this exercise and doing the comparison of the two, obviously, Cripps is not playing, which we'll, we'll get to, and we're obviously upset about that, but I think it's a, it's a good time to have a little bit of a look at how does Cripps stack up against Nate Fife, who is an absolute superstar of the competition. Dan is here, list manager Dan. Uh, take us through, mate, what have we got here? Well, I mean, this is two beasts of the game yep. for me. Like, you are looking at the two most well-rounded midfielders in the competition. Um, and let's have let's look deeper. So, obviously, Fife's more experienced. 60, 70 more games. Um, seems to favour a handball more, Crips, which is probably a sign of being in a side that has had no forward structure for yeah. 75 of them 94 games. Speaks a little bit about his role in the team as he well. Does, yeah. He does, yeah. He does have a load hand in getting it out. Where Fife is kind of like now got more of a free reign. Yeah. But I think what's interesting is that Crips finds the ball and has the effectiveness of Fife. Where That's people very think interesting. Fife uses the ball well. Yeah. Career-wise, they're, they're the same player. Yeah. There's no difference. And we've just basically got him at 70 games. Uh, you know, we've got 70 games in hand to play. I mean, for me, like, Fife is my favourite non carlton player. Yep. And I think this is the one thing I'd like to see more of from Cripps is the goals. We don't get to see him maraud forward. And when yeah. he does, like, in Brisbane... Yeah. He tears teams apart. Yeah, yeah. And when he does add that to his game, and that's the thing, he had the, the criticism, oh, he can't kick. Well, he's fixed that right up. Now, he had the criticism last year, he's a terrible set shot at goal. So far, so good. He's been pretty good uh, when he's had his set shots. Um, I just think he adds to his game year by year. But if you're looking for something to have a go at Fife about, it's probably his set shots. He sometimes misses those big 100%, ones. Yeah, yeah, he's probably under pressure. I mean, I thought what was interesting, though, the most interesting start here is the metres game. Yep. That Fife takes the game on a lot more, and I think that's something I'd love to see Cripper be allowed to do. Yep. Get the ball, and instead of handballing it to a Fisher, yep. an SPS, he takes it on, where Fife has that reign. Right. Particularly this year with no Neil. Yeah. That's probably going to say a little bit more about where Fife is advanced. He's probably a little bit more advanced at getting the ball, creating space, and going. So again, something for Crips to work on, but like I said, 70, we're, we're 70 games in hand now. Oh, We've definitely. basically got Nat Fife. We're, we're being really harsh to Crips, yeah, probably, yeah, because yeah. Fife's had some wonderful years. And the last two are the interesting stats. These are stats we haven't shown on the show. Yeah. So inside 50 success, that is the amount of times an inside 50 entry results in a goal or a score. So very exciting start. And you can really see like very similar uh, when the ball does come by foot, yeah. Inside 50. That's a um, that's a very interesting stat there for five. So 16% of the time when he's disposing the ball, handball will kick inside 50, they score. Okay, I like it. I'll have a bet with anyone as well on the show that you'll never think who's the most successful person. I'll reveal it next week. Okay. But you'll never, ever reveal it. There you, you go. You won't There's a question. Do it. Who is the most successful <laughs> player for disposals inside 50 leading to a score. Yeah. Okay. So it's behind or a goal. So, okay. And it's their kick to that player. They okay. can't handball it off. It's got to be a Direct. mark or a goal. So who's generating yeah. genuine scores from their inside 50s? Yeah. Okay. So, and the last one's TPI flux. So this is a stat that TPI uses to give you your final TPI. So effectively it means what TPI thinks potentially they could get in their worst game. So if we see Cripps, Shows he fluctuates a lot, and this His season best and worst is, we've seen like yeah. he had a mid thirties against Brisbane, yeah. destroyed it, and then he came back with like a five. So yeah. he can really struggle. Like we see five most consistent player in the comp by a long, long, long way. Yeah, wow, zero point two six fluctuation. So it's actually saying his worst on invariably is better than his average. Interesting. There which you is go. scary. Well, there you go. There's the comparison. I think we'd be pretty happy as Carlton supporters knowing that, first of all, Cripps hasn't even played 100 games yet. Oh, definitely, yeah. But he's already on track to to be as good, if not better, than Nat Fife by the time he plays game definitely, number yeah. 165. So, big positive for me. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Is Cripps at Fife's level yet? Does he have a little bit more to go? What do you think he needs to add to his game? Let us know.